Okay, let me grab a shirt here. I got a very simple analogy. Let's talk about uh, something Tesla, Steinmetz, Dollard, and a few others said. You know, people that are actually geniuses in field theory and electricity. Yeah, and dielectricity. Um, interestingly enough, and I've quoted this in countless videos, um, Charles Proteus Steinmetz, who actually was smarter than Tesla and had an enormous amount of patents himself, he was complaining in his book, Electrical Discharges, Waves, and Impulses, in 1917, I believe, on page 4, I believe. <laughs> Oddly, I remember that. He was complaining over 100 years ago that people in his day, electricians, had completely misappropriated and, and screwed up the principle of dielectricity. But what if I were to say something as stupid as if uh, I were to stick a perturbation? Of course, this is just a shirt, right? If I were actually to set up a perturbation in this shirt and of course I had lumps you know and then, then I were to say that these lumps were particles they're either charge carrying particles or photons and I've never made any declaration that atoms don't exist I don't know why people people keep saying that about me in my comments I've never denied uh, atoms um, the point being is that a lot of the things that people think are particles certainly are not but if I were to make such a ridiculous uh, statement as that and of course humanity is of course intellectually unevolved but we're currently living in an epoch of uh, atomistic thought where we believe one way or the other rather humorously that mother nature is a crazy hooker with a giant bag of magic bumping particles and well by god that's that's just the way the universe works and of course it's not so I'd like to actually quote you some stuff that you've never heard from Nikola Tesla and some others regarding the so-called electron. Now, I don't know about you, you've probably never given this, a th given this any thought, but if you think the power lines that are running out in front or behind your house are transporting trillions and trillions every microsecond of uh, little particles, then you've got like a psychosis. You've got a psychosis of atomism. Anyway, enough of me. Let's actually get to what the actual genius is of electricity and field theory have to say on the electron. And of course it's completely ludicrous if the more you think about the so-called charge carrying particle the more uh, completely asinine it becomes. Uh, Nikola Tesla November 1928 interview on the whole subject of matter in fact Dr. Tesla holds views that are startlingly original Actually, they're not original at all. It's just what the guy says. He disagrees with the accepted atomic theory of matter and does not believe in the existence of an electron <laughs> as pictured by current science. Um, by the way, this interview is from Popular Science Monthly in 1928, uh, November. Um, Nikola Tesla says, To account for its uh, apparently small mass, science conceives of the electron as a hollow sphere, a sort of bubble. Such a bubble could exist in a medium as a gas or liquid because its internal pressure is not altered by the deformation. But if, as supposed, the internal pressures of an electron is due to the repulsion of electric masses, then the slightest conceivable deformation must result in the destruction of the bubble. Just to mention another improbability. This is from the article called A Famous Prophet of Science Who Looks Into the Future. Here's another quote from Nikola Tesla. My ideas regarding the nature of the electron are at total variance with those generally, generally entertained. Meaning, his, uh, he has no peers, so I can't say Tesla's peers. Um, I hold that uh, it is a relatively uh, large entity carrying a surface charge and not an elementary unit or particle. When the presumed electron leaves an electrode of high potential and in a vacuum, it carries an electrostatic, <coughs> dielectric, he said electrostatic, charge many times greater than that of normal. Tesla did not believe in a charge carrying particle. Let's just uh, leave it there for Tesla. There are actually two other quotes from Tesla on that fact. Here we go from uh, Mr. Dollard. There is no rest mass to an electron. If uh, it is given here that the electron is no more than a broken loose hold fast. I don't even know what a hold fast is. Like when you see trailers, they like buckle stuff down to hold stuff onto the bed so it doesn't slide off. That's called a hold fast. The electron is nothing more than a broken loose hold fast under the grip of the tension within the dielectric lines of force. The, uh, they're broken at the ends in the split half package of uh, spaghetti. They're like the broken ends, excuse me, 
in a uh, package of uh, spaghetti, you know, like the little loose uh, pieces of uh, stiff spaghetti in the package. Obviously, the reasoning is not welcome in the realm of Einstein's theory of relativity. Here we go from Charles Proteus Steinmetz, uh, actually more intelligent than Nikola Tesla. He's also the guy that perfected Nikola Tesla's IC generator. Unfortunately, to a large extent in dealing with dielectric fields, the prehistoric conception of electrostatic charge or the electron on the conductor still exists. This is the most brilliant person who ever lived on electrical field theory. Some of his equations are over 20 pages long, way smarter than any of you people out there, any of you, including your PhD professor of uh, physics and uh, electrical theory, way smarter than any of you. Unfortunately, this notion still exists and by its use destroys the analogy between the two components of the electric field, that being the magnetic and the dielectric. This makes the consideration of dielectric fields unnecessarily complicated. Uh, the idea of electricity as the flow of electrons, quote-unquote, in a conductor was regarded by Oliver Heaviside, an extreme genius, by the way, uh, equally on par with that of Steinmetz in his own ways. Uh, look up Oliver Heaviside and what a giant he was. Oliver Heaviside called this a psychosis. This encouraged Heaviside to begin a, a series of writings. So, also, let's uh, look at J.J. Thompson. Um, the guy who supposedly uh, discovered the electron. It's a principle, it's a concept. It doesn't actually exist. His own discovery, J.J. Thompson himself, considered uh, the, uh, the so-called electron as a terminal end of one unit of dielectric induction. Here we go. Uh, electrons as a separate distinct entity doesn't really exist. They are merely bumps in something called a field. That's Dr. Uh, Stephen uh, Biller. And uh, he's absolutely correct. Here's another one uh, from uh, Dollard, I believe. You cannot say that the stretching of... Uh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. You cannot say that the stretching of a trillion rubber bands nailed to the floor and releasing them or breaking their force lines is the flow of electrons. Discharge is a terminal movement in systems of inductance or dielectric capacitance. There are no discrete particles in the universe and certainly none that uh, mediate charges, discharges, magnetism, electromagnetism, gravity, radiations. Only fields. All uh, are modalities of the ether. That's what a field is, a uh, ether perturbation modality, of course. Just like ice, water, and steam are different temperature and pressure modalities of water, right? These are not different things. They are expressions due to, uh, um, in the case of fields, not, we're not dealing with temperature, we're talking about different uh, ether modalities. We actually have linear, circular, transverse, in the case of light, which is a coaxial circuit. The so-called electrons are not particles, not objects or subjects, but the dynamic principle of discharge, and are certainly not charge-carrying fields, nor are they particles, and they're not electrons, uh, electron entities, and surely these uh, energy discharges in the vacuum of space um, are certainly not electrons. We're talking about like wireless power induction in a complete and total vacuum. This is a, a fiction or fallacious observation and even more faulty mental acuity, lack thereof. These are spawned naturally from the minds of materialists or atomists. Electricity is, uh, is ether, is a state of dynamic polarization. Magnetism is an ether in the state of dynamic circular polarization upon itself. It is the radiative termination of electrical discharge. Dielectricity is the ether under stress or strain. The motions and strains of the ether give rise to electrification. And, of course, the equation is phi times psi equals Q and Planck of electrification. These electron particle uh, concepts do not mediate, do not mediate uh, electrical and magnetic forces or their likewise uh, ether field modalities. Um, here's one from Walter Russell. To describe an electron as a negatively charged body is equivalent to saying that it is an expanding, contracting particle. There is no such condition in nature as a negative charge, nor are there negatively charged particles. Charge and discharge are opposite conditions, such as filling and emptying, or compressing and expanding, the opposite conditions. Here's one from Eric Dollard on J.J. Thompson. J.J. Thompson developed the ether atom idea from, uh, from Michael Faraday into his uh, electronic corpuscle, uh, the indivisible uh, unit. One corpuscle terminates on one faradic tube of force, and this uh, quantifies as one column. This corpuscle is not an electron. It is a constituent today of what we uh, know incorrectly as the electron. 
Thomson relates 1,000 corpuscles per electron. In this view, that taken by uh, W. Crookes and J.J. Thomson and Nikola Tesla, the cathode ray is uh, not electrons, but in actuality, uh, corpuscles of the ether. And uh, this is correct. This is uh, correct thinking by intelligent people that gave us 100% of our electrical world that we know today. Um, the notion of an electron particle has absolutely no basis in reality. It's purely conceptual. It's an arbitrary abstraction that was uh, quantified for means of calculation, i.e. That's what a modern scientist today, a modern scientist today is not a truth seeker and they're not a true scientist. What they are are mathematicians. And there's nothing wrong with math, but math never explains anything. And we cannot quantize everything. Like, uh, you know, the universe is not you know, a hidden macro-micro uh, world of bumping particles. The universe cannot work that way. Actually, and also explain, I've done it like in a hundred videos, it seems like, explaining the so-called electron microscope is also extremely easy. It's actually a dielectric emission uh, and uh, using electrostatic uh, reflectance off the actual target. This is why all non-metallic, uh, like living tissue, they actually have to be gold sputtered. They're actually uh, vacuum put in a chamber, they're vacuumed out, and they're gold sputtered with atomic gold, so they act as electrostatic reflectors. That's the only way so-called electron microscope imaging can occur. Just do a Google search on, uh, on, uh, on a gold sputter chamber for electron, microscope, electron microscopy. Um, like metals and uh, stones and other things like that, they don't need it, but I mean, that's what it is. It's actually a, uh, a uh, electrostatic uh, gun that's uh, using the reflectance whereby which uh, you know the target uh, is magnified at uh, extremely small scales I mean electron microscope you know is not shooting out like little tiny BBs of electrons that's not how that works it's literally a uh, a, uh, a scalar wave electrostatic gun that is uh, using its target's reflectivity. And if it's not reflective, like an insect, if you've got an electron microscope, an insect, you got to actually stick it in a chamber and gold sputter coat it. Look that up if you don't believe me. Because, you know, a bug or a flower is not uh, dielectrically reflective, at least extremely uh, low levels thereof. So that's why they actually have to be covered in atomic gold. Anyway. Thanks so much for watching. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure you're probably not smarter than uh, Tesla, James Kirk Maxwell, Oliver Heaviside. Because these guys all said the same thing. There's no such thing as an electron particle. It's purely conceptual. And it's quantized as a particle for sake of mathematics. And uh, these idiots have always complained to me. It's like, well, does the math work? It's like, well, yeah, the math works. I'm not questioning the math. But math doesn't explain anything. I can quantize anything, but a quantization and replication and like having another scientist on the other side of the earth use my math to replicate a discovery and experiment doesn't prove or explain anything. It proves that the math is accurate, but the math has never explained anything. Math has never explained anything. Yeah. Bean counting is one thing. Correct explanations are another. It is intelligent to have correct math and be able to uh, replicate things. Wisdom, however, is actually understanding what is really going on. And that is not math, that's actually arithmetic. What's the difference? This is the reason why the Pythagoreans and the Platonists were interested not in math, but in arithmetic. A lot of people think there's no distinction there, but there's actually a huge distinction. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hope you like these videos. If you do, you can always click the link below. Send me an email, tell me how much you hate me. I get those once in a while too. <laughs> Thanks. Goodbye.